What is the greatest mystery in the Bible? We're going to talk about it. Let's go bold. This is the Go Bold Podcast, a deep dive into God's Word with Scott Patton, where disciples of Jesus witness the Bible come alive and we give Satan no quarter. You know, guys, one of the greatest mysteries I believe in the Bible is hands down is understanding the Holy Trinity. And, you know, I don't care if you are a young believer or a older, mature believer. This is one of the hardest concepts to grasp, I think, in Christianity. And um, it is to understand the doctrine of the Trinity. But it is so vital that we do this to to understand this as to live as disciples of Jesus and understand the the significance of the holy trinity trinity and you know guys it can be extremely difficult in fact i think it's probably if you look at all the doctrines in the bible um this is the center of gravity uh, of all the bible and it's it's one of the most complex doctrines, and in in, in indeed, I, I do believe it's the greatest ministry or the mi- mystery. And I know that some will probably disagree with me on that, but that's okay. But I think it's so vital that we grasp this as disciples of King Jesus, because here's the thing, guys: we have we as Christians have declared for centuries that God is true, and and it's this is this is recognized throughout the Bible, and sometimes. We are tempted by this mystery of the Trinity to search, I think, for kind of search for superficial things. And, um, you know, I personally believe that besides salvation, when you look at the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is, I I believe it's the second greatest gift that you receive. Um, And, you know, because here's the thing, we cannot operate on this earth uh, without the Holy Spirit, but but the Holy Spirit is what gives us our identity in Christ. So I want you to go today. We're going to look in the book of John. And you, you know, guys, there's not a lot of... Um, I know that there's some would disagree with me on this, on, on uh, maybe some would disagree with me on this passage, but uh, the book of John... I believe gives um, one of the, the the best descriptions of the Holy Trinity, and also the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Now, um, I will tell you guys, and the reason I believe this is because it comes from Jesus. You know, everybody's always asking, well, "What did Jesus say?" Well, let me tell you, uh, John gives this this beautiful description of of the Holy Trinity, but he also, when Jesus gives this, he's also giving us the the key to the mystery, and the key to the mystery, I believe, is understanding the powers and the and who the Holy Spirit is. Now, we're going to call this 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 whole thing this this passage. We're going to be in John chapter fourteen, verses fifteen through seventeen. And uh, as I read God's word, if if now this before we go any further, this passage starts with if, and this is a simple uh, understanding. Uh, when Jesus asks a question, now this is this is in red letters in your Bible, so this is not Scott speaking, it's not anybody speaking, it's Jesus speaking. Okay, so uh, this is what it says: If you love me and keep my commands. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you be with you forever. Verse 17, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. Now, this is, I believe, the greatest description of the Holy Trinity in the Bible, hands down, and I haven't found one now. And when when I when I did some research on this, I don't see a lot of theologians using this. Um, but but I love this this the way that Jesus it, it expresses. This. But I want you to I want you to look here. I want you something to catch on something. All of this is predicated on if. Now, what I believe Jesus is saying here: If you love me and keep my commands. 
Okay, that's Jesus talking, so you love me, keep my commands. That's our salvation in him. And notice this. Now, now notice what happens here. Jesus now, Jesus now is talking about, uh, notice he's talking about the Father giving you another advocate or the spirit or some like to call the Holy Ghost. You see, and this is what I, as I like to say, did you catch how the world cannot accept him or see him or know him? Now he's speaking, of course, of the Holy Spirit, but here's what's fascinating. You can't have the Holy Spirit without the Father. And you can't have the Son without the Father. And the Father gives the gift of the son, but he also gives the gift of the father. And that's what, or I'm sorry, the father gives the gift of the son. See, I'm getting confused just talking about it. But to activate the spirit, you must be saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to look at this chart. And I want you to see here in this chart, and, and I've used this chart, and this, this is, you know, this chart has been around for, uh, for a long time in theological circles. But I want you to look at this chart here, and I want you to see, I'm going to kind of walk this with you, where it says, and it's a, it, for those of you listening uh, or, or just listening today and not, and not on the visual podcast on, on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you, you have basically the Trinity chart, and I'm sure if you've been a disciple for Jesus for any time, you've seen this, but it has on the top, top left, the Father, and it's, then it says, is not the Son, and then it goes below and it says, is not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Father, but all three are God. Do you catch that? The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father, but all three is God. See, this is where uh, we have to have a theological understanding and, and, and understand this. And this is why it's so uh, e e um, important that we grasp this. Now, what I like to do a lot of times with kids is I do this every year and I, and I keep, uh, and I, and I, and, and with our, especially with our youth. And I, I like to use an apple analogy. Uh, you know, the apple has, 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 three, has three parts. It's, it has the skin, it has the flesh, and it has the core. But if you're going to ask somebody to eat an apple, you're going to eat the apple. Same way with the egg. It has the shell, it has the yolk, and it has the white stuff. Okay, but if you're not, you're not going to say, well, I'm going to have some yolks, or I'm going to have some white stuff, or I'm going to just have some shells today. That's not how you do this. You say, I'm going to have an egg. And this is, this is how we have to understand the Holy Trinity. All three, okay, uh, when you have uh, is God. Now, the New Testament has a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. And see, this is the, the mystery, I believe, is understanding the role of the Holy Spirit in the true in God. Sometimes uh, the, the personhood of the Father and the Son is always appreciated, but the personhood of the Holy Spirit many times is neglected. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, uh, Southern Baptist, and for years, I, I'll just tell you guys, from the time I was uh, 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 was a believer as a young man, and even when I got in uh, high school and college, and for a long time, I never, you never, Baptist never preached on the the, the the Holy Spirit, and but but I'll never forget one time uh, that I, I heard somebody uh, that said the needed prayers. And the person made the, the, the gesture, well, we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit is, is uh, with you, brother. And I don't remember exactly how it goes, but, but the person answered, I don't need the Holy Spirit. I need Jesus. And I think that that application that I'm giving you right there, folks, is, is really sums up our entire misunderstanding of this mystery. Because here's the thing, guys. Any discussion of the Trinity the spirit, <laughs> it's there. He can't be treated. And, and see, this this is where, this is where I think we make the mistake a lot of times as disciples of Jesus, and especially as pastors, we have to teach this. And it's not something that that you can just teach one time and go on. This is something that you have to uh, really work with your congregations, work with your Sunday schools, and work with your small groups. And I think that there's a lot of confusion because it goes back to, to the book of Acts and, and when, he, when he talks about 
uh, is how he's described, he being the Holy Spirit, is described in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, uh, verse 8. And you guys know this, and if this is Jesus talking, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and ye shall be my witness in both Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Other translations say to the ends of the earth. So, you know, a lot of times we said that this power, and yes, the Holy Spirit, he is the most powerful being in the universe. And so many times we treat, we want to say it's an it or a force, but that's not the, that's not the description. The Holy Spirit is not an it, but he is a what? A he. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Well, I'm just going to tell you. I want you to look back on verse 17. I want you to look back at verse 17. And that, his pronoun is him. I'm just, it is, Jack. That, that is. It's in black and white. When Jesus says something three times in one sentence, it's probably true. I'm just saying. The spirit of the truth. Look at that. The world cannot accept him <laughs> because it neither sees him or knows him. Three times one sentence. So if Jesus is saying that, that's one of those kind of foot stompers that you probably need to pay attention to. But if you know him, <laughs> just the next sentence. So now we're up to five times if you're just if you're looking at the word him. or I'm sorry, four times. But you know him for he lives with you and he will be with you. That is many, why we refer to the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost as him. The fact that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not some impersonal force like gravity. He's not like the force on Star Wars, but it's known. He, he shows. I mean, you go throughout the Bible, it's replete. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit speaks, Hebrews uh, chapter 3. He reasons, Acts 15. He thinks, he understands, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He wills. This is where we get the willpower, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He also, in the book of Ephesians, he feels Ephesians 4.30. He gives. He remember, you know, remember, well, I think we uh, years ago that I, I did a sermon on grieving the ghost, and maybe that's that's a good podcast to have at some time. But these are all qualities. Everything that I'm talking about are qualities of personhood. That's a mystery, guys. We must know the Holy Spirit, who he is, what he does, and how he does it, and what he doesn't do. Our Lord gives us the Holy Spirit two notable names. One of them, another one is comforter and the spirit of truth. It means called along to a side to assist. Now, the Holy Spirit does not work uh, instead of us. He does not work in spite of us, but th through us, through him. You know, the English word uh, is, is translated to comfort. It comes from two Latin words that means comfort with strength. We usually think as comfort as something that is uh, consoling somebody. And to and that, that's true to some extent, and the Holy Spirit can obviously do that. But true comfort gives strength to face life bravely and to go bold and keep on going. He does not rob us of responsibility or make it easy for us to give up. But some translations will say the Holy Spirit is an encourager, which he is. It's a good word choice. It comes from the Greek translated, uh, and I'm, I'm going to butcher this, I'm sure, parakel. Uh, Prakletos, and it's translated also as advocate. He is our advocate. We are living in the presence of the Holy Spirit, a personal uh, God of personhood. This is absolutely, understanding this, folks, is absolutely essential to thriving in the Christian life, and I would give so many things if I could have understood this sooner in life, and I hope you can. Victorious disciples are not found in a bunch of uh, stuff or manufacturing right feelings. It's, find, it's found in a, this it's life. The mystery to this life is, is found by abiding in the presence of the personhood of the Holy Spirit and understanding that there is a true in God consisted of three equal personhoods, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that we have a distinct relationship with with this true in God. You see, folks, the mystery boils down to this. We have a creator. His name is the Father. He sent his son as our redeemer, who is Jesus Christ. And after the resurrection, Jesus sent, ascended into heaven. And just like he promised in Acts 8, he sent his advocate, 
to be our advocate here on earth. All three have always existed since the beginning of time. Remember, the Father sent his spirit and Jesus activated the spirit for those who love him and follow his command. This all started the day of Pentecost. That's why I think the day of Pentecost is one of the greatest days in, in uh, the history of the world besides the resurrection. But the day of Trinity was complete on earth was the day that the church was born. And to understand this mystery, you have to activate the Trinity in your life. You have to have eternal life with Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is a bold word from a bold book. God bless you, friends, and go bold.